welcome to our latest video where we're going to be showing you how we installed this Chinese diesel heater under our bus. So we've decided to undersling it in this box which we bought separately. We're going to be showing you how we did that. So I've broken the video down into chapters so you can just quickly get to what you would like to see. Um, I've included a section on what came in the kit and what we discarded. A section on setting up the fuel pump to run quietly. Come up with a couple of tricks for that. We're going to show you all about this box, um, how it came and how it looks, how we've insulated the exhaust, how we've run all of the lines and the fuel lines and everything like that. We've broken it all down and this is how we did it. So hopefully you find it helpful um, and interesting. Any questions, any comments, do drop them below. And if you like this video, please do give us a thumbs up and a like. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy. I'm just going to talk you through everything that's on the bench. So um, a lot of the things that are in here came with the kit. Some of it didn't though. I've decided to either upgrade it um, or supplement some of the stuff that was in the kit. So this is the five kilowatt heater that came in it. And then largely everything that's over this side was what came in the kit. So the wire and loom, the pump, um, these vents here, this splitter the controller the silencer the exhaust the fresh air in the instructions and so on and so forth all over here came in the kit the box that's underneath uh came from a metal workers and over this side i've got some stuff that i managed to, to salvage from the old heater that came in the bus so this um little piece of u section is so the exhaust can run a little bit smoother so i kept that also kept some of these splitters here um, i've upgraded to a longer exhaust here so i'm going to use that as the exhaust I've upgraded the fuel line to a nylon hard fuel line um, and i've also bought some upgraded um, fuel filters because the ones that come with them and notoriously prone to breaking. The other thing I've got here is some exhaust wrap, so I can wrap the exhaust up. I'm also going to wrap up the uh, duct that comes into the van, so I can keep all of the heat that's coming out of this end as warm as it can be coming up into the van, so I'm not wasting any energy um, underneath. This here, I've just got a bit of an upgraded fuel hose here, so I'm going to be using it's one thing that's not pictured here because I've already installed it. Uh, but you'll see that by the magic of video is the fuel dip so this is a piece of fuel hose that i'm going to cut to be slightly shorter to run from the fuel dip to the filter which then will in turn will run to the fuel pump here so on the bench here is everything that i need for the moment to install the fuel pump um, and the fuel line, which I'm going to run first, this is step number one. So a couple of things here to, that I'm just going to quickly get rid of the bench. So this is just some split conduit that I'm going to run the wire in for the pump in and the fuel line in. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of that at the moment. We'll see that again later. The way that goes. Other things in here that came in the kit that I've decided to supplement. So this is the fuel filter that came with it um, they're notoriously flimsy so I'm going to get rid of that and not use that one so away that goes and then I only need one of these but you can pick these up um, in kit so I actually bought it in kit form made specifically for uh, diesel heaters but basically what these are are um, little fuel filters that are suitable for either motorbikes or lawnmowers so you can pick them up in most places um, again with the same diameter as this hose here so I only need one of those so in my kit came some green uh, flexible hosing I've decided to replace it with this uh, nylon hose because it's just a, a little bit more rigid it won't kink as easily the other thing that comes in the kits that aren't very good are these little clips I'm not using these so they can stay in there 
in the kit that I bought here, these are a little bit better, but again, I'm not going to use those ones. What I've decided to go for is these, these little Michelor clips. Just gives you that little bit of even pressure. So I'm going to do that on the bench now. Um, so when we get back over to the bus, it's just a little bit easier to install. So I'm going to do everything I can here and then we'll move on. All right, so this rubber boot here is important because it helps dampen um, a lot of the vibration you get from these pumps and it, it creates tick, 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 tick sound. Um, it can be quite metallic and quite loud. So what this is designed to do is made of rubber. Um, you can't really tell from the, on the camera, but it's made from rubber. So it's meant to absorb that sound. To help it a little bit along the way, because I'm going to be mounting this to a piece of metal under my van, so one of the cross beams, I'm actually going to put mine through a piece of this hose, like this, just to give it a little bit more of a barrier between the vehicle and the pump, and that should cut down a little bit more on the sound as well. The other thing to mention here, so um, on the pump there is an arrow that marks the direction of flow of the fuel. This will point down towards where your fuel tank is going to be. Now, in my, exam, in my case, that is the vehicle's fuel tank. So I'm going to mount this on my cross beam, um, point it directly downwards like so, and then that's going to go to the fuel tank. So what I need to make sure I do is put the put my fuel filter on this end so the fuel is filtered before it passes through the pump and goes to the heater so on mine you can see that it has an arrow marking the direction of where the fuel needs to go so you just need to make sure that it's the right way around otherwise it's not going to be filtering anything so you can see here that fuel will enter through this nipple uh, fill this vessel here and be filtered before it's passed out of this nipple um, and into the pump. And then all, all this will do is remove any debris or any impurities from the fuel uh, to make sure it doesn't damage your fuel pump, doesn't pass through and then into your heater. So what I'm going to do is use another one of these clips to attach this in here. assembly so far I'm gonna have a short run of this fuel hose uh, that I bought additional to the kit to my fuel tank to my fuel dip fuel filter upgraded fuel filter short run here of hose the fuel pump another short run hose here and then what I need to do is install my nylon fuel line which goes in the end of here you need to push that all the way in. Okay, so this fuel hose here is rigid. This is not, this is flexible and it one inserts into the other. You need to make sure you push it all the way down. So if I just show you there, I haven't just pushed it in a short way, I pushed it all the way down so it is meeting the end of this fuel hose, fuel pump barb here. 
And then what I'm going to do is clamp it just after it here so it's up tight. Again, I'm going to use the screwdriver um, so I don't over tighten this. Okay, so I've tightened it. You can just see that I've just tightened it here so it's just, it's just starting to bite into the, the rubber. I don't want to open tighten it because the minute you do that, you start to deform this pipe a little bit. To make it easier on myself, I'm gonna drill that through now and pop it through. So when I put it in the vehicle, um, it should just make life a little bit easier for me. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm just gonna pop that safe clip here. <laughs> Okay, so in here, in this rubber bracket, I've put in one of these sleeved nuts. So th this is actually a rib nut. I'm not using it as a rib nut. It just happened to fit in here like perfectly. So this is an M M5 rib nut. And then what I'm gonna do is attach this piece here <clears throat> to this, which is gonna allow me to hang this off a vehicle. I know that people have done this with cable ties um but nothing against cable ties i just thought this might provide a little bit more of a stable connection for it and hopefully keep it at the angle that it's supposed to be at whereas with, if you attach it with a cable tie the risk that you run there is that it can move around um Bands are made to move around, so uh, I, I can't see how using a cable tie would be able to help you maintain the angle that you need to have. Imagine the vehicle is here, it's going to hang down roughly that angle there, bolted through, which I'm going to drill through now. One thing I just wanted to show you before we move to the van. So this was the, the fuel filter that came with the kit um, that I discarded. You saw that I discarded that earlier on the bench over there. I've just knocked it and it's just snapped off, which kind of proves my point. Don't use these ones, get some upgraded ones. They're cheap um, to upgrade and hopefully it won't leak. Whereas this, you know, I, I don't put much faith in it. So. Replace that is my tip. The pump hangs off of this rubber hose here, which is quite rigid, to just cut down on vibration, and that has made a difference. Um, but just to cut down on a little bit more of the sound transfer, so I'm going to wrap it in this um, pipe insulation. But yeah, that's how I'm going to be keeping the sound down to a minimum. I've got it hanging off of that rigid plastic hose so it doesn't flop about like it would be on a zip tie and then I've encased it in some pipe lagging and then on top of this in my van there'll be about 50 mil of floor so I don't think we'll hear it inside the van and hopefully that'll keep the sound to the minimum for people outside of the van. The diesel for my heater is going to come directly from my tank and I decided to drill through the top of the sender unit Okay, so I've got the dip fitted in the top here, um, secured underneath with nylock nut, and the washer is under there. I'm just gonna measure the depth of the tank um, so I can cut the dip off. This is the uh, short piece of hose that I've been talking about that runs to our fuel dip here, just along here, along the same fuel line as the bus down to where our pump is here. And then that snakes its way through the bus in this trunking, which I've zip tied sort of every 30 to 50 centimeters, comes along this portion of the bus here, all the way to, along the main chassis beam up to where 
Peter is at the back of the bus. Wiring that comes with it is pretty simple. Um, you've got this plug here with a couple of wires that go to the fuel pump. You've got this connection box which goes into the heater itself. This here comes up to your controller. And then you've got a cable that you need to turn to your um, body's earth. And then you have a cable for your power, which is fused. The problem I have with mine is that the cable that required for my fuel pump is not long enough um, because my vehicle was quite long. So what I'm gonna do is extend that now by cutting this junction box off um, put some uh, 5 amp cable in between which is more than enough I'm just extending that out so I can run it through the van the wiring's now in I've run it in this trunking that I showed you earlier on the bench so it runs all the way along there along with the fuel hose all the way along to my fuel tank which is up there um, so now we're going to have a look at how we're gonna install everything in the Underslung box. This is the metal boxes that you can buy for the two kilowatt or the five kilowatt heater. Mine's a five kilowatt. So it's made of stainless steel, uh, come pre-assembled. So I've already taken these six rib that bolts out. So this is, the, this is one side of it. Take the side off and you can see it, that it's all, you know, professionally folded on machine professionally laser cut out you've got the laser cut out for the, you know the exhaust and the air for the fuel in on either end you've got a nice precision hole for the air in and the air out um, on the top here you've got six holes so these six holes are the mountain holes um, I'm not actually going to be I'm going to use these mountain holes but you also get these mountain plates for them these mountain plates, if you imagine, would be on the inside of your van, and then they, you know, these bolts would pass through the skin of your van floor and then into this box. So it would be, you know, it's going to be very secure, bolted through uh, this stainless steel, through into this box, ready to hang. I'm not actually going to be using these because I've, I've, my floor is slightly set up differently from from most vans, which I'm going to show you later but it's, not, it's a nice trick to have them there. When it arrives, it arrives wrapped in this plastic, uh, fresh from being laser cut. It's made of stainless steel, so you can take that off, leave it on. I'm gonna take it off in a minute, um, just for some ASMR action, and just to show you how shiny it is. On this side here, you've got a plate which is cut in half, which allows you to put your wire in through, and then you can pierce this grommet, or I've actually bought a half moon grommet to go in here for your wiring loop to pass through. And like I said before, you've got your holes here for your exhaust and for your air in, for the uh, fuel in, and then for the bolts to pass through here. So you can just mount that up. So yeah, I'm quite impressed with it. And um, you know, for this, the amount of stainless steel that goes into making this box, I think it's um, well worth the money. I'm gonna show you it mounted up in the van. Um, it's gonna save me a lot of space underneath. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it so far. So here's the box bolted into place. So you can see in my van, I've um, used box section to put mine in, but yours will just go straight through the floor likely, unless it's 
I like mine, and you've got the floor out, and you can bolt it through. So that's not ever going to go anywhere. Uh, it's there for life now. This is now ready to be bolted into the box. That's done with four of these. So these are like winged serrated nuts that go onto um, here, 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 and here. Studs is the word I'm looking for. So I'm gonna slide that into the box, tighten these up, and then we're ready to install this wire and harness. Um, to give it a test run. Let me show you the install here, just a little bit closer. Obviously, I can't run the ducts in properly until the floor is in, but it will give you an idea of how this works. Um, so this is the air in, which is gonna run up into the cab. So we're recirculating the air. I'm actually gonna put it under the bed so it's drawing the cool air from under the bed in. And this is gonna be the warm air out, which I'm gonna bring on up, have ducts running along this wall and into the bathroom area. Here's our stainless box, opens on this side. So if I need to take the heater out for servicing or anything, I can get that out into this space here. Same way I got it in. Here, up in a shielded area, it doesn't look like it's got much space, but actually under here, it's got a good inch or so all around it um, at the least is the air inlet and that works fine and dandy i put it there to stop the road grime and everything down here we've got the exhaust which is wrapped runs down to the back there where it exits underneath the vehicle little tip for you so when you put this exhaust wrap on and run the heater so when i did the first heater run through for about 40 minute run through this does smoke um, and that is normal and it stops smoking after about sort of five, six minutes. So down here we've got uh, the clips on, the wire and harness coming up to the middle of the van, which I'm going to run directly to the battery. And that's my install. So yeah, I'm really quite pleased with this box. It's mounted really securely to the chassis here. It's going to save me space inside. All that I'm going to have running up in is this ducting. Um, which I might replace with something a bit more robust, but like I said, I'll cover that in another video. And this inlet here, so yeah, there we are. So the little exhaust comes out just underneath here, as you can see poking out. And what I'm gonna do, I won't show you in this video, but what I'm gonna do is order a piece that I can bring out the side of the bus here, that they make for boats. Um, just to neaten that off a little bit to make sure that the, the gases are definitely escaping. Just one thing to point out here, so on the bottom here, you can see that there's like a little drain hole. Let me just point that out. So here, there's a drain hole, there's a tiny hole. So it's important that you mount it that way up because that is what will let the condensation out through that exhaust. Anything that doesn't come out of the actual pipe itself will drip down into there and out. Here's a close-up of the exhaust with the wrap on it. It does a superb job, this wrap, actually. So I can actually put my hand down onto that side of the body here when, when it's been running for a good 40 minutes. Um, and that gets barely, barely warm. So it does a good job of making sure all of those hot gases are escaping out of the exhaust end rather than through the side of the bus, which, you know, we don't want that to happen. We want to keep things nice and safe. So. Yep, that's where the exhaust goes on up, the opposite direction to the inlet. So we're keeping the um, fresh air and the dirty gases away from each other. Right, I was just going to give a really quick demo of startup for my 5 kilowatt heater. Um, on this particular model, when you press the OK button, it will tell you the temperature, which is 4 degrees today. It will tell you the power that it's set on. So this is set at its top 5.5 kilohertz. So 5.5 hertz. 
and it'll tell you the voltage of the battery. Now that's important to keep an eye on that because you don't want it dropping really below 12. Um, it says 11.9 and the instruction is stable, but um, you, want, you want it to keep that high, otherwise it's gonna cause you some errors. I'm just gonna start it up so you can hear what it sounds like. So it does take a minute or two to heat the glow plug up a bit like a normal diesel engine would um, and after that point you'll hear the fuel pump kick in to start feeding fuel through to the heater and after that the fuel pump slows down ever so slightly and then you'll start having hot, hot air delivered out of this outlet here. You can hear it's just starting up. Whilst that's just heating up, I'll just show you what's going on on here. So the fan is on, the uh, glow plug is heating, and the pump has just activated. Let's be quiet. Okay, so you can hear that. My floor is out, remember? So you're going to hear it in here, so it's not too bad. So go through here. I reckon it's six degrees now, but I'm not sure about that. But here we've got the pump on in. Just have a listen. Yeah, that's fairly quiet, a lot quieter than the heater itself. As a baseline, the fan itself on full chat is about 74 decibels, which is quite loud, and it is louder than the pump itself. Pump is on. Filtering through. You can hear the heater kicking up now. I'm just getting that delivery of fuel. Using a decibel meter app, I measured the decibel level to be 64.5 without the lagging on. So, you know, not overly loud, hanging off that strap, but by putting the lagging on, this was reduced to just around 60.9 decibels. So, you know, quite a reduction, well worth doing, and it keeps it free of stone chips too. Back up at the heat end. Starting to come out of here now. Recirculated air at the moment's gone through here. Obviously, it won't look anything like this. And out the back, the exhaust here. We've got the gas escaping. As you can see it's nice and clear. I don't know if you can make that out, but you can just see a vapor trail, a little bit of condensation. It's working its way up to its full power. Yeah, one of the things I point out, I was working in here last week and it was um, zero degrees outside, even with the floor out. When I ran this for test for 40 minutes, it put out sort of six, seven degrees in here. So, you know, I don't think it's gonna be able to um, have any troubles heating my bus. Oh, I actually fell through the bus. <laughs> you can hear it running now. All the warm air in the world out here. It's fab. Um, it's quite quiet. That brings us to the end of our video. Um, so you can see that I've run everything that I possibly can underneath the bus. The diesel heater's working. In future videos, I'm going to be running the ducting up into the bus through the floor. So. Uh, do keep an eye out for that and if you've enjoyed the video please do subscribe thanks for watching as i said earlier any questions or any comments or tips please do leave them below thanks very much for watching guys keep safe